Hey, welcome to the songcast.com presentation. I'm Bring CBK. Going to be a shoutcasting else. And joining me as you're here as a co caster. And this is the Cooler Master Honor Tournament $5,000 prize fund line. Big shout out to Cooler Master for throwing up the money to put this together. Cyber Sports Network for helping administrate and run this tournament. And of course, Phil the Thrill, just because he's fucking awesome. Uh, here we are in the group stages. We are now game number two of this. Uh, of this group matchup that we've been covering. Ling, Ling's Walkhouse is going to be taking on Team It's Gosu. Team It's Gosu won the first game. They're now 3-0 overall. Ling's Walkhouse 0-3. Oh so, to say the least, a very important match for both of these teams. Pretty much knocking them out or advancing them on, guaranteed. We'll see what happens. Yori, though. How you doing, buddy? Ready to finish things off here? I'm doing very well. Uh, ready to finish things off, certainly right. And we even got a fifth game in today. We we're really only planning on four games yep. today, and we we're able to, to squeeze in a fifth. So that's that's pretty cool. A little extra coverage. Not uh, too upset about it. Uh, I do want to say before we get too far into this game, the It's Goes to Finals that were supposed to be coming up right after this have been postponed. This took a little bit longer than initially expected. So um, especially because TIG is EU, they don't want to stay up super late on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. They've already played for a while. So I can understand. I kind of screwed up that scheduling a little bit. So I apologize, guys. I know I announced it was coming up right after this. It is rescheduled for 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, which is sort of an odd time. And I think we're going to be able to cover it live, but that's a whole other conversation for another day with more frustration attached. So... Just wanted to, to clear the air on that one. It will be tomorrow. At the very least, the games will be played tomorrow. Worst case scenario, some replay cast will come down. Just so to clarify, you said we as in you guys, not oh, Hawkeye. Yeah. We, uh, we as in the It's Gosu casting stream on Owned 3D. So, yeah. yeah. Don't expect it on Hawkeye tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, we is not a good term to be using these days, I suppose. All right. Anyhow. You ready to look at these bands? I am, yeah. Unfortunate there, but hey, hopefully tomorrow things go well. But yeah, the bands indeed with the pick starting. Let's go over and let's see what we're dealing with. We, of course, got Silhouette, Nymphora, Polywalk Priest, Ophelia, Magmas, Moraxis, and Tundra. So obviously the Polywalk Priest band going to be banned against the Limp. He's just been playing a... He's had a poly day today. Uh, oh, when it yeah. comes to uh, when it comes to playing that hero, he's definitely been playing it very, very well. And not surprised to see a band here with the final band by Ling. Um, that did leave open a couple of picks, though, specifically the Pebbles pick, and we've been seeing him banned a lot lately, picked up here by Ling with their first pick, actually, so, um, interested to see how that works for them. Also, Tempest was left open, and sure enough, already picked up by teammates goes to, so your thoughts on the bands here? Yeah, well, the, the first thing that jumps out is the lack of junglers banned. Ophelia is really the only jungler taken off the board, yet again, Demented Shaman banned, despite his nerf, uh, in that recent patch on Friday, so that's... Still just a little bit surprising to see how some teams are totally ignoring him and other teams are still banning him at pretty much regular frequency. Still a little bit surprised to see Zephyr not banned here. Uh, I mean, I'm not positive Team It's Gosu is going to pick him up as they do uh, grab Palfagor and Bubbles here to complement their Tempest Glacia. So Zephyr actually would fit into this roster pretty nicely, uh, which makes me wonder if Ling may try to pick him up here. I, I just... I. I have trouble imagining that Ling just didn't ban Zephyr and they're just going to ignore him here and leave him on the board for Team Itzgosu to pick up uh, with their 10th pick. That could be the case, but it wouldn't surprise me yeah. quite a bit. Uh, yeah, that is uh, that is something to, to see here from Ling. But I, I look at Team Itzgosu's lineup and... Um, I get, you know, finish something like Keeper of the Forest here. I know they already have Tempest for a jungle, but could you imagine to go Keeper of the Forest? Just <laughs> massive push with minions. That'd be pretty epic if uh, they do something like that. But that would be pretty sick. Uh, uh, now right. Tempest can lane, and he he has laned in the past, so I, say, I guess I wouldn't completely put it past that. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they finish things off here. Yeah, it it really is because you know I said Zephyr would would work fairly nicely and that would leave a solo Balfagor and yeah. I yeah, that's a little bit rough. I mean, he could do it. It kind of depends as well if Ling picks up a jungler here so they have two solo lanes, then mixing in that solo Balfagor might be a more viable option. Like we said there's a lot of junglers on the board here. Ling could very easily just go for a parasite pick here. Um which, which wouldn't be too bad either. We'll see. They have a Soul Sealer right-clicked with about five seconds here remaining. So the, the moment of truth, it is going to be an Andromeda Soul Stealer. Wow. So, whoa, breaky CPK. Soul Didn't Stealer. see that coming. Didn't, yeah, didn't what do you that think? <laughs> um, you know, well, they definitely went a little old school last game as well, going with the Pestilence pickup, and here they are going with the Soul Stealer pickup on top of that. So uh, clearly, uh, clearly Ling likes some of, some of that old school play, but Soul Steer is just simply put a hero that, God, he's such a good hero, but he is very, very 
uh, very squishy, and no escape mechanism, of course. I mean, if you apply pressure to him early on, you can, you can definitely lock him down. So, um, now don't get me wrong. If he happens to get farm, he is known as one of the more dominant mid-game heroes in the game. If he gets a good farm, if he gets snowballing a little bit, he will take over, as we used to see so many times in the Haunt competitive scene. But um, it's been a long time since we've seen a successful Soul Stealer and I don't think anything has really changed lately that would uh, lead me to believe that this game will be different. In fact, I'm double-checking on the patch, and yeah, nothing even happened to Soul Stealer in the patch either. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's just a it's a very very risky pick here for Heartskate and from Link specifically. But uh, I, I'm looking forward. I will say that much. You know, will it work out for them? That's the curious thing now, and I uh, can't wait to see if it does. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, the problem with Soul Stealer right now is he just doesn't fit into this meta game. He's got great farming tools. He can do a lot of burst damage, but he's just so squishy. And that lack of escape mechanisms, that or lack of escape mechanism that he doesn't have, or I guess he has the lack. There's some confusing positives and negatives in that sentence. Um, regardless, he just sh gets shut down so easily. He's so susceptible to stun locks, silences and just really has no out. Even when he gets that portal key, it gives him that initiation power, but still makes him fairly easy to lock down. And um, we'll see. Like you said, if he does manage to pick up some solid farm, he can certainly take off, but I, I honestly don't think I've ever seen a Soul Stealer take off. Since my days of casting Heroes of New Earth Breaking, I don't think I've seen a successful Soul Stealer in the competitive scene. Really? <laughs> I, uh, I can't think of a time that I have, honestly. It's been, it has been a long time. It, that's, yeah, that's the point I was definitely bringing up there. I mean... It, it's been a while since uh, now again back in the earlier days. I mean, he was the he was he was the go-to carry. It, melee range or melee. I mean, he was the go-to carry. We saw him. It seemed like every single game we saw him on uh, one team or the other. Um, and I will say, you know, if we did see him pairing him pairing him up with a hero like Andromeda and the, the trio of heroes, like I go from time to time talk about. Uh, nostalgia factor, but him, Andromeda, and then Pestilence. You got so much mm -hmm. massive minus armor there. Uh, that was when you could affect Congor with minus armor, though, and they would kill him in literally like five seconds, but obviously you can't do that anymore um, with minus mass armor, so maybe that takes a little bit away from that style of strategy, but the fact that he is paired up with an Andromeda, who both the Aurora and the Aura will be very beneficial for him, again, though, if it gets to that stage, but um, yeah, he needs to have a great star. He is going to be the bottom lane here. That in itself is actually something pretty unique too. It, when you did see, it was always just solo min no matter what. But again, that goes back to the the meta shift as you were talking about too. It's just because we don't see two one two and not nearly as much as it really was the go to as it used to be when he was very popular. So having that solo mid lane not nearly as likely nowadays. Yeah, it definitely is interesting, and all everything is interesting here. So they're going to put a solo Pharaoh mid. So it, it's strange because really Link has three solo heroes here. Pharaoh, Soul Stealer, and Pebbles. And they're going to put Pebbles with a Luna here in the top down to the bottom and is going to be uh, just solo. So it's going to be a tri lane top. Yeah. Pardon me, I missed uh, the uh, uh, Andromeda up there. So this is going to be a, a triple stun tri lane with a solo Soul Stealer down in the bottom. They, now that tri oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, they're, they're definitely expecting uh, Forsaken Glaciers to be up here. They, they were expecting Bubbles to go bottom and Forsaken Glaciers to be out there, but that's obviously not the case here, so... Yeah, exactly right. That's what I was going to say. Like this, although it seems like a good idea, and that's a very scary tri lane. Um, Soul Stealer is not going to fare well against a Glacius Forsaken combo yeah. at all. I mean, he'll be lucky to get experience. So that's really, I don't know. They're going to have to switch this up pretty quick. And I think like once Ling sees how the lanes are unfolding, they're going to make some adjustments uh, pretty damn quick here. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely unfortunate for Lane, but obviously that's where you got to give credit to Team It's Gosu and uh, making the read on that and realizing that's like a very likely possibility. So arrow headed um, top now, so they're gonna rotate yep. right away. You see the the swaps though coming in here, and oh look at this Andromeda and Aluna gonna hide in a little cubby here in the middle lane. So Balfagor will need to be very very careful. Obviously Pebbles here as well. And if he gets you see him playing very passive, though. He knows something's probably up until everyone starts showing themselves. He'll probably continue to play passive, expecting perhaps some support to be here with Pebbles. So uh, definitely some smart play going on from Limp right here. But again, the second he goes a little bit too far. In fact, that may have been the cue right there. Oh, and Andromeda comes out a little bit too early. And I think uh, Balfour will be fine in the end. So Balfour, very, very good plan on his part. But this leads me to the bottom lane as well. I mean, you just look at Soul Stealer. Obviously, this is a horrid lane for him. <laughs> very, very awful lane for him. He doesn't even have a creep kill yet, deny or kill. So no stacks on that charge yet for a second ability with the Soul Steal. And if he gets caught by Crippling Volley or Glacial Freeze, I mean, he'll, he could very likely be dead. Now, the support is coming down here, though. 
with a Luna and Andromeda. So things could get interesting. Yeah, so it looks like it's, I mean, it's going to be a tri-lane now focused around Soul Stealer. That's sort of the way things are shaping up. It'll be interesting to see where Luna and Andromeda end up when all this roaming around is, uh, you know, finished up. Luckily for a team at Skills, maybe not luckily, but uh, good news for them is they do have two wards here in that entrance to the jungle. So they have some really great vision. They know exactly where Andromeda and the Luna are and uh, what's about to come their way if they step up a little bit too far. So you see both Glacius and Forsaken Archer here playing very cautiously and uh, very very rightfully so, which is good news for Soul Stealer as well as he is now able to pick up a couple of creep kills. But um, we'll see. I mean, regardless, even with these two other heroes here, I think this is still going to be a little bit tricky for Soul Stealer yeah. now that they've lost lane control. Well, and again, something with talk obviously a big downside. Oh, Pharaoh at the meantime of the top lane, he will get taken out right there. Those was a deny that came out looked kind of funny, yeah. but I was actually <laughs> yeah. denying his mummy wall, of course. But uh, yeah, that was a good kill set up by Tempest, of course, and Bubbles able to do enough pressure to end up getting the Bloodless kill. So well played by our team. It's Ghosted Team. But as I was pointing out, though, this tri lane Soul Stealer sounds god awful. And the biggest reason for that <laughs> is simply because Soul Stealer, out of really any hero in the game, I think it's safe to say, he needs those levels. I mean, he needs to get that Soul Steal up. He needs to get those Demon Hands level 4 ASAP. That's arguably one of the better, if not the best, farming tool in the game, despite even the 5 mana increase that happened to it from 75 to 80. Still. So, yeah, yeah it's still very, very efficient and very, very effective for a farming tool. So, um,. Seeing this tri lane be ran here by Ling, you know, that's obviously what worries me big time. Now they are going to go for a kill on Forsaken Archer right here. Aluna, no stun just yet. She's still level 1, so Forsaken Archer will end up surviving. And comes a Glacius with a haste and actually frees it on Andromeda. There's the crippling volley coming out, and Glacius will get the last hit right there. So what a, what a turnaround. However, in the meantime, they turn it around on a Forsaken Archer as the demon hands on top of the power throw get him killed. So actually ends up working out pretty well for Ling in the end. Yeah, you know, kind of a one for one. It was really interesting. It's on my screen seeing Glacius cruising with the haste rune, man up, drop that slow, and they turn around. I'm just like, wow, that was a really manly Glacius right there with the haste rune. I have no, I have no fear. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so like you said, a pretty even exchange. But at least Forsaken Archer got the kill, and Aluna got the kill for Ling. So. Um, you know, I guess it's good to get Forsaken Archer. Oh no, actually Forsaken Archer didn't, pardon me, Glacius was the one to pick up that kill. So yeah. most support's getting kills, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah, a pretty even exchange. So I'm going to come out onto Glacius though, there's a Demon Hand for some harassment. Uh, no Power Throw to follow up, uh, or Stun for that matter from Aluna now that she's sitting level 2. Uh, but solid harassment, Glacius forced to use a potion here. And looking at the GPM chart, uh, Forsaken Archer still actually out farming that of uh, uh, Soul Stealer, which is... Good news for TIG. Yeah, and of course that's definitely to be expected, especially with how this game started, but well, maybe we'll start changing around. But uh, this has actually got me thinking a little bit too on the Soul Stealer pick. And as I've thought more about it, you know, trying to get some more reasoning on why they would go, go a hero like that. And, you know, the Hellborn team, they do have a mass push minion team. And just talking about that Demon Hand ability, if you, wanna, if you want an ability that's very effective at countering pushes as far as mass minions, as far as creep clearing, Demon Hands, again, is arguably the best ability in the game for that. So um, perhaps that's some logic that the Legion team had here, seeing that the opposite, what the opposition was running with that Tempest and Balfour at the time, uh, figuring we might as well go a Soul Stealer pick to try to you know relieve some of the pressure that inevitably will happen as a result of uh, the Mass Minions. So you know, thinking a little bit more that way, again, I, I, can, I can see what they're thinking there, and, and we'll yep. see how that works out for them in the end. But again, there's a, there's a big reason why... <laughs> We don't see him on the competitive scene nowadays, and uh, no, you, so we'll you, you bring up a good point. I, I saw someone mention that in chat as well. That well, maybe they just want him for the creep clearing, giving that huge pushing power. And there's definitely some uh, viability in that statement, but it's one of those: is it really worth it to pick up a soul stealer to run in a tri lane just to clear some creeps? You know, it's it seems like a really big investment for something that you could, you could get that trade-off with some other heroes, you know, you can mix in heroes like Torturer, if you really need creep clearing, you know, get like a Midas, someone who has a little bit more uh, of an active presence in our current metagame than someone like Soul Stealer. There are other heroes that can double as creep clearers um, that are a little bit easy, e easier to deal with, I guess, in the early phase. Because um, even right now, I mean, we see Ling really sinking a lot into making sure this Soul Stealer has an okay time to start things off, and I would say it's just been okay so far. Soul Stealer is only at 173 GPM. It's not like he's free farming down here because of this tri lane. Really, a lot's going into this, and they're not seeing much out of it yet, at least. Yeah. Well, that's 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 another downside about a hero like Soul Stealer too. You know, and that's nothing has changed for that. But he's always he's usually a slow starter, and especially in the lane setup that he had initially. If he gets outmatched right from the beginning, you know, the longer it takes for him to start adding up those souls with the second ability, the longer it takes him to get those levels to level up the demons that we talked about. He will 
it'll be a negative snowball effect. I'm trying to think, you know, uphill effect, kind of, where um, he will really slow down and uh, it's hard for him to, I, I guess that's kind of bad to say. It's not necessarily hard for him to recover because he definitely can recover very effectively, but um, he can struggle in the beginning if you lock him down well enough. And, and so far, you know, his souls are maxed out right now at 8, of course, being level 1. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, but but that actually brings up another thing about Souls today. Now we're on the topic of him, or continue to be for most of this cast. But <laughs> there's uh, hey, how can we not be? <laughs> after his death, it now only um, removes your 60 or 33 percent of your souls rather than 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So instead of going from 30 to 15, you go from 30 to 20, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something uh, to keep in mind as well. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good change to point out because that's one that sort of it was a change, but we didn't see any increase in Soul Stealer play, so it kind of got brushed aside. You see in the bottom lane, uh, looks like I don't know how to say that name. Aluna gets pushed up a little bit too far here and does get taken out by that Forsaken Archer Glacius combo as the tri lane is now dissipated. It was kind of a I guess a two on two lane now as Andromeda is roaming to the mid. They're gonna try and set something up on the Balfour here, but Pebbles doesn't <laughs> have enough mana to make anything happen. He's gonna be able to survive. Balfour actually almost turning it around on Andromeda, doing a hell of a lot of damage, but yeah. uh, same story, different chapter, just not quite enough damage to finish off the kill here, so that's sort of unfortunate. Pebbles is farming very nicely, though, here in the mid lane, just uh, hovering around that 300 GPM barrier. It does have a nice early bottle, so that is good news for Ling, seeing Pebbles getting some early farm and solo experience. Yeah, he's he's definitely the, the shining star here for, for Ling once again. Mr. Ling, mind you, obviously playing the Dark Lady last time. So, and he was just like that game, just like this game, the the Shining Hope. So, maybe that'll be the the good news for here for the Legion team. And, of course, on a hero like Pebbles, that, that can prove to be very effective. But uh, will it be enough? Uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Balfour, on the other hand, you know, he isn't doing too bad. He's only farming 217 gold per minute. 19-3 grief farm compared to that 31-14 and 14 Pebbles. So, Pebbles, no doubt, is winning it. But Balfour is managing to hold his own. He is level 6 as well. And at least getting a solid farm. And I think that's actually really good for Team It's Ghost. You know, they, they ne aren't necessarily expecting him to take off when it comes to farm. You know, just just uh, getting some decent farm. Getting the levels at the very least. And then perhaps the early ring of sorcery and then moving on from there. Maybe Helm with the Black Legion, depending on what early route they want to go from. But you look at what he's doing right here. Pressuring Pebbles. Look at him using the minions to block Pebbles right there. Great minions block with the micro wing. The hell on New Earth comes out and the final wow. auto attack. No, Pebbles goes into the trees and he's blocking himself actually but it won't matter. Limp will get the kill there on the Mr. Ling and wow. Limp once again making big plays. Excellent micro on his part. Absolutely right. I, I mean just totally pat -lock in. Pebbles, he hit the nail on the head. It was just very well executed. One of those wow, Mr. Ling, or Limp is making that look pretty damn easy right now but that is not an easy thing to achieve so certainly uh, well played are in order right there. Uh, team with Skozo has to be feeling pretty good right now, though. Sitting 4-1 and one with a huge golden experience lead to set uh, start things off in this game, I think that's better than what they expected because the true power of their team, I think, really lies in their ability to group up and push in that mid-game. That level 10, level 11 mark is when I'm sure we'll see them really group up and pressure these towers really heavily. And that's when you would sort of expect their team to take off. So seeing that they have a lead of this significance this early on is just uh, it's money in the bank. That's good news for TIG, for sure. It is, and definitely in a better better spot as a result of that. Mm -hmm. um, as you see those golden experience leads, but again, Pebbles doing what he can, but now Soul Stealer, looking back at him now, uh, the point I did make is, all right, so he isn't necessarily off to the greatest start, but when you talk about heroes now also that can recover very effectively, Soul Stealer, again, arguably one of the better, if not the best in the game, as far as being able to recover because of those demon hands. It keeps going back to that ability being such a powerful utility tool. Um, so the fact that he is getting off to a Soul Star here, not necessarily the worst thing in the world for our Legion team, but still nonetheless unfortunate. It's just going to really come down to... Uh, teammates go to, and whether or not they're going to really uh, really come together and start pushing earlier on. Because, again, you look at their makeup, and they definitely have a lot of push potential. Uh, Tempest is up here at the top lane. Speaking of that, Feral's coming in to our minute soul nuke, dropping him to half-life or so, and applying a bit of pressure. Not going to be nearly enough for a kill, though, but I do wonder, you know, with Balfour those max minions as well as Tempest level 4 minions, are we going to see them just kind of group it up and make some massive pushes, or will they continue to kind of go more of a laid-back farming stage and, you know, pick off here and there? It seems for now... It's a little bit more of the pick up, but again, we're only eight minutes in. We do see a dive attempt here at the bottom lane for second archer. There's the land on the soul steal by the crippling volley. The piercing arrows comes oh, out, oh. and down goes Hardscape right there. Not cool. able to get away. It was very close. He almost skirted out of there, but uh, the good combination came out and set up the kill on to Soul Stealer. 
Yeah, well done. I mean, to credit what you were saying, when are they going to start pushing? They have such a nice lead early on. That pressure is kind of off, you know, that timer yeah. of, oh, we're going to have to make something happen before Soul Stealer gets out of control. I mean, that's over. That, that's done. They've already sort of won the laning phase. So they can choose to push if they feel like it. They can put, choose to just keep farming. I mean, really, it's Gosu is just controlling this game right now, so they can kind of do whatever they want. Um, but, you know, I would say probably around that level of, level 10, level 11 mark is when we're really going to see these guys start moving around. That seems to be the timing when those core items come out, at least that first round of core items, the Astrolabe and the Ring of Sorcery most notably, um, before they start putting a lot of that pressure on. But we'll see. You know, like, like you were saying, they could very easily just sit back, wait for Tempest to get that portal key, wait for that second round of core items to come about uh, before they really get too aggressive. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's in the middle lane. The Pebble stalagmite attempt. I don't know if he was actually even attempting that Balfour. Core. Maybe just cleaning up the minions. Might have been the middle ladder right there, but uh, we'll clean up the minions and save the tower for now. Meanwhile, at the top lane, look at Pharaoh using the Wrath of the Front right there on a Tempest. Saw him incoming after he got caught in the cow field. Pushing Tempest away. Knows that he has the ultimate ready to go. Will Tempest look to use it? Taking a lot of damage. There's the ultimate activated. Locking down Pharaoh. Won't pull oh. it in and drop it at Luna as well. But Tempest needs to be careful. Not going to start dropping. Spawn some minions right before he runs away. He's going to get power throw. Power throw. Power throw. Oh, he went up a little bit too far. And Tempest will survive. Bubbles now taking some pressure. But Aluna's in a lot of trouble. Gonna go in the juke spot, though. Oh, and it looks like maybe getting away. Bubbles trying to find him. But Aluna is going to skirt on out of there. So uh, able to get away herself despite not even having deja vu. But wow, what a getaway from Tempest right there. The ultimate on top of it, able to pour it out. Very well played by uh, Bassett's right there playing that Tempest. Yeah, uh, and that was uh, sort of a misplay from Andromeda as well, walking into the Tempest ult, and it looked like he had a Comet stun up. He might have just been outranged, but it looked like there was an opportunity to maybe get that stun off right away. Um, but all the while down here in the bottom lane, Glacius actually going to fall to Soul Stealer, so Pallet trying to roam around. Uh, I'm not really sure what his plan was. I caught the tail end of it, but uh, Hardscape able to do enough damage to finish him off. So that is good news for Soul Stealer, though. Only one 75 GPM on their carry is just bad news. I mean, especially, again, given that they had that tri-lane, they sacrificed the farm of Andromeda and Aluna to try and buff up that Soul Stealer. Seeing him well below 200 GPM is very, very disappointing. In the yeah. mid lane, more action continuing. Hell on North gonna come out. That'll be enough to secure the kill on the Cat Low main on that Pharaoh. Pebble's in big trouble as well as the Kelp Field is still tying him down. Bubble's gonna finish him off with that Shell Surf and uh, take cover for good measure here. Looks like they are going to continue to man up. Another Shell Surf going to come out, and Aluna going to be in big trouble. There's the freeze from Glacia, so three for nil exchange here in the mid lane, and Team Itskosa going to be able to take a very easy Tier 1 tower here in the middle. Yeah, uh, very easy indeed right there, and just great coordination on their part. Able to get the hero kills, easy tower cut. In fact, you're looking for more, and right there, Mizukami right there on a drum when a will get dropped as Haxoran continuing to do work on Bubbles. He is now 3 0 3 We'll take a wrath of the Pharaoh, though. The Mummy Wall comes up knowing that he doesn't have a Shell Surf. Bubbles are going to hold his ground for now. Maybe to get away, though. There's a take cover. The Shell Surf port. Yes, he is going to be able to get away. He was on top of the Hellfire. Knew he needed to go the other direction. And that he did. Very well played by Bubbles right there. And able to skirt on out of there. So again, the team support is there. Team It's Ghost is just looking on the ball today. It just so happened because of how the how it worked out casting wise. But we casted their first series against A Man. Now against Ling's Walkhouse here, and been uh, been looking very very solid. And oh, and again, I, I really go back to the great thing about it about it too. Going back to the first series, they ran two completely different lineups. Here in this series, it's been pretty pretty different lineups for the most part too. So. Uh, team is goes to really showing that diversity. They are not by any means a one-dimensional team and uh, can't go many different styles of strategies. In fact, they're going to apply pressure now here at the bottom lane. Souls to there. He's going to come in with some demon hands perhaps, but yeah, he's not going to do enough, and here goes the tower. So easy tower yep. kill once again. Yep, tower going to fall. Up in the top lane, we did see Pebbles manage to uh, finish off uh, Tempest as uh, we see more action out here. The bottom lane as well, Cat Lomain getting taken out. Actually, the minions... Uh, doing a sizable amount of damage, though Chessy actually the one uh, to pick up that kill. But alas, Tempest did push that Tier 1 tower up in the top lane. Paid with her life, but still, uh, all of the Tier 1 towers now dead here for our Legion side. We see Andromeda actually in a little bit of trouble in the top. Mr. Ling going to come in. He is going to throw the truck, but unfortunately it's going to pick up a creep. Pubble's going to shell surf in, and will be able to finish off Andromeda. So well done by Hatcher. It looks like he juked back to try and fake out Pebbles, and uh, I think he certainly did that. Now he's going to be able to make the great escape while manning up simultaneously. So well done by Haxor as he sips away at the bottle. Yeah, Pebbles was chasing him down, obviously with the Ring of Sorcery and cutting through the trees, but just not able to angle correctly. And uh, Bubbles easily gets away. So again, Haxor four zero and 3 now. I mean, he is just having, having a hell of a game as far as movement goes and farming. And he pulled up that gold per minute chart. I mean, look at yeah. that. Bubbles through Tempest, all very, very consistent. 
and very strong throughout this game. Obviously a lot of pushing going on, just a lot of teamwork in general of going around getting kills. And then even Glacius sitting at that 200 GPM mark. You compare that to the Legion side, it just really is abysmal. Soul Stealer continuing to get really nothing in this game so far. And Andromeda will be dropped right there in the meantime. More pressure being added. Balfour goes surrounding his minions on top of Pharaoh right there. But in comes the Stalagmites from Pebbles. A possible turn around the power throw. The Demon Hand's coming out. The Hell on New Earth 80 plus charges. Going to do a bit of damage right there. Unfortunate for him, though, that the support really just wasn't nearby. So perhaps some overconfident, cocky play there <laughs> from Link. But hey, you know, with the day he's had, he's, uh, yeah, he's allowed to do that. Definitely a bit of a, an overstep there from Limp. I mean, Haxorn was able to survive, but both are just the two of them up at the second tier tower. It's like a 2v5. The fact that Bubbles was able to survive is sort of a victory right there. And uh, So you're right, a little bit of a misstep, but with the lead they have, really not so big of a deal. Um, so we'll see. I mean, Tempest just continuing to farm away here in the jungle and uh, getting pretty close to that portal key. It does have steam boots as well as magic armor already uh, with 1600 in the bank. So we're looking at... Oh, probably a 16, 17-minute portal key here for Tempest, which ain't too shabby, if I don't say so myself. And I think that'll be the time we'll see teammates go to really start to get more aggressive with uh, pushing these Tier 2 towers. We see Forsaken Archer as well, uh, sitting on a Level 1 Shield Breaker nice and early on also. Yeah, portal key is obviously very important overall in this game. And you mentioned that Tempest there, and so he's well on his way, but Pebbles and Soul Stealer, not so much. Neither one of them anywhere close to getting that. Um, and it is a case, especially with the way this game is going. By the way, speaking of Pebbles, we'll get swapped out right there from Andromeda, but that will maybe end up being the Sacrificial Lamb as a result. Oh, nice stuns coming out. Stalagmites and the Aluna stun, and actually Andromeda is going to be able to squirt on out of there, it looks like. So, well played by Musukami once again right there, and he will homecoming stone out before pressure adds on. So, good getaway from him. But, yeah, going back to the point of, yeah, no portal key is on either Soul Stealer, especially Pebbles. He's, he's the obvious one. Soul Stealer, you know, maybe if he was having a great game, could have possibly been a choice. But with the start that he's had, I would think, you know, a straight into a shrunken head at this point. Uh, would be something very, very worthwhile here for Soul Stealer. But you see him right here, Balfour diving on top of him. Now the port's coming in. So Balfour will have to fall back. There's that Chuck on top of the Rise of the Pharaoh. Where's Hell on Earth? Where's the hell new Can he get it off in time? No, he cannot. In came Bubbles with the song. I see not enough to save him, though. But trying to turn something around. You also see Glacius off to the side. Could have tried to run away. The Soul Stealer ultimate oh. was that used right there. But Bubbles, oh. I think he was actually just out of range. So uh, I don't even think he took any Ooh. damage from that. And he is going to be able to get away, although kind of stuck right here. Uh, you do see Glacius and Tempest meet up, and they'll be fine in the end. But yeah, great getaway once again from Haxorin. Yeah, exactly right. Actually going to see the engage continue here. Swap going to come out. Tempest going to get the ultimate. Going to catch both of them. Haxer going to come in for that double tap. There you see Pebbles try and clean it up. Does finish off Glacius here, but I think he's going to pay with his own life. And, of course, down he falls. So well done by Team It's Gosu. It was a one-for-one -one exchange, but uh, they cleaned it up pretty well. Haxer picking up the hat trick here, and all the while, uh, Chessy pushing that Tier 2 in the top lane. Did you actually see what happened there with the swap? Did I, <laughs> I caught the tail end of Andromeda swapped she out. She swapped Tempest into a perfect ultimate placement. <laughs> like, she was literally right next to Pharaoh, so she swapped Tempest, put Tempest in the middle of her and Pharaoh, and Tempest was like, all right, I'll just are on top of you both. So, uh, yeah, that was just a really unfortunate circumstance there for Andromeda. But I, I, I kind of wonder, you know, what he was even thinking in the first place. I mean, obviously, support was coming. I mean, maybe they couldn't have seen that as close as it was, but... Whatever. What's done is done, obviously, and it just did not work out too well for them in the end. Now, Soul Stealer, going back to him. Uh, again, he's a big focus here for this Legion team. So as I talked about, if you are going to have a hero recover, he will be one of the heroes in the game. He is at 260 gold per minute now, so he is starting to creep up a little bit. And as I stated, I think that shrunken head would be just very ideal here, especially with the way this game's going. Uh, for him, and you see the mighty blade picked up. So very possible opportunity. Balfour charging on a soul just says, I don't care who the hell you are. I'm gonna go right on top of you, bitch. Hundred charges on that release new or hell on new earth. There we go with the hell on new earth and soul stealer starting to drop again. The swap from Andromeda. Will it be enough to save? They do pick off Balfour in the meantime, but Soul Stealer goes down. Bubbles, however, Haxrim may fall for the first time in this game. And yes, he will. A six hundred and sixty bonus gold right there for Catlomane on that Pharaoh. As a result of getting that streaks ended right there, Pharaoh in the meantime taking the freeze. And now he's actually in a lot of pressure, and he should be able to get away. But now Aluna gets turned on, and Aluna will end up falling. The Glacier Dapper, Glacius wants more. The freeze out of Pharaoh, and will kill Pharaoh, will fall as well. But hey, he'll take that every day of the week of sacrificing himself for a kill like that. And now Tempest should be able to squirt on out of there. So I, you can definitely kind of get a feeling of Team It's Gosu starting to have a little bit more fun with it now. And as they should, because their lead is really, really comfortable here. <laughs> yeah. 
they have a really good lead. Exactly right. The, the tier two tower in the mid lane gonna fall as well. Uh, so it's looking good for Team It's Goza. Port actually gonna come in. They might be able to screw this kill onto Forsaken Archer. Pebbles not gonna be able to get that Chuck Stalagmites combo, unfortunately, but uh, may still be able to move in here. Pick up the kill. Forsaken Archer trying to move around the trees. <laughs> oh, he's going to catch Pebbles with a volley, and uh-oh, is Chessie going to be able to make the great escape here? The team's coming for support. It looks like Chessie may be able to do it. Pebbles does have a chuck, but he is going to get silenced, and uh, he's just going to get taken down. Does manage to get a stun off that does connect with Haxorin, but uh, wow, Forsaken Archer barely able to survive there. Looks like he got hit with a Tormented Soul also, but um, going to be able to survive to tell the tale, so well played there. Jeez, I mean... <laughs> These escapes, man. Team It's Ghost yeah. just really is on another level. I mean, again, nothing against Ling. Obviously, you know, that's not the most A-quality team by any means as far as, you know, what we're used to seeing top-tier play. But Team It's Ghost are looking very good all throughout today. And, you know, they're well on their way to starting off their group stage 4-0. And as we stated earlier, this will, if they happen to finish off winning this game, they'll be